Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. This is Mike at someonesbones.com, the Internet's premier source of Nibiru news and information. If you're looking for pictures of lens flares, street lights, sunspots, and other atmospheric aberrations, look elsewhere. You won't find them here. If you're looking for fantastic writing, great journalism, and compelling articles, you've found the right place. As a side note, we receive dozens of emails a day from people asking us to critique their Nibiru photographs. Our policy is this. We will consider photographs taken with true astronomical equipment, not cell phones, GoPro cams, camcorders, or DSLRs, unless affixed to a real telescope along with the coordinates of the object in the photo. We've been working overtime at the Bones to bring you Nibiru news you won't find anywhere else. I'm going to keep it simple today. I'm going to do an audio reading of the story we published this morning, offer a little bit of commentary on it afterwards. As always, we want to know what you think, so comment below or visit us at www.someonesbones.com. Headline reads, Harvard, Harvard Psychiatrist Says Nibiru Addiction A True Disease. And the story. Nibiru addiction is a growing psychological illness says Dr. Patricia Wallace, a Harvard-educated psychiatrist with over 30 years of clinical experience. She became aware of this illness, she says, when patients began creating elaborate fantasies about a distant celestial object on a collision course with planet Earth. I first learned about Nibiru from a patient back in 2012, Dr. Wallace said. He was absolutely convinced that a mythical planet was going to smash into Earth in December of that year. I desperately tried to work with him, but the fantasy had completely consumed him. I thought, of course, this was an isolated incident, until I met another patient several months later who also believed in Nibiru. In 2013, Dr. Wallace started researching the psychological impact Nibiru had on patients. She began clinical studies, opening her doors to patients whose visions of Nibiru had affected their lives. However, since Nibiru believers do not believe they are psychologically impaired, Dr. Wallace had to entice them into her office for psychological counseling. She offered incentives, $150 to each patient willing to communicate his Nibiru experiences. Unfortunately, patients flooded her office and she soon realized that the majority of new patients merely sought some free cash and did not believe in Nibiru at all. To her credit, Dr. Wallace had done sufficient research to weed out the phonies. It was a tough chore, Dr. Wallace confessed, but I was still shocked at how many people actually believed in the Nibiru hypothesis. Staggering, truly staggering. The ones I talked to really didn't want help. They simply wanted to tell me their Nibiru stories. They were more interested in convincing me about the Nibiru realities than acknowledging their own problems. In one year, I saw 50 Nibiru patients. Some of these people need thousands of hours of therapy. Dr. Wallace believes these, believes these patients suffer from a debilitating condition, a diagnosable ailment she calls Nibiru addiction. The disease, she says, manifests in three stages. The first stage is Nibiru awareness, Dr. Wallace explained. This typically occurs when a susceptible person is exposed to the word Nibiru or Planet X, often through word of mouth or read on the internet conspiracy forums. During this stage, the individual is still a fully functional member of society. In the back of his mind, though, he is constantly thinking about Planet X and how it will destroy the Earth. He doesn't speak of this openly or publicly, but may communicate anonymously with other believers. Over time, Nibiru awareness may escalate to the second stage, Nibiru addiction, a deeper pathology that seizes the patient's psyche with overwhelming thoughts and visions of Nibiru. At this point, Dr. Wallace says, patients often exhibit uncharacteristic behavior, such as nonviolent verbal out bursts against anyone challenging their belief in the Nibiru system. Nibiru becomes their psychological anchor, Dr. Wallace said. Nibiru addiction should not be taken lightly. Patients start to suffer disassociation, wholeheartedly consumed with exploring the Nibiru myths. 
They may spend hours upon hours prowling internet forums, believing they are conducting research for the betterment of humanity. They present compelling arguments with absolutely no evidence. The disease must be arrested here. Without medication and intense therapy, the condition may worsen. In rare cases, Nibiru addiction, addiction escalates to Nibiru psychosis, by which point the patient has lost touch with reality. Although seldom physically violent, patients suffering from Nibiru psychosis tend to elevate their sense of self-importance. They perceive them, themselves as Nibiru messiahs, part of a savior movement dedicated to warning the world about an impending Nibiru apocalypse that will eradicate all life on Earth. Some are truly convincing, Dr. Wallace said. They may start websites or YouTube channels and rally other Nibiru believers to their cause. Unfortunately, they've lost touch with friends and family, burned bridges, lost their jobs, and sometimes worse. For example, I had one patient who suffered a terrible case of Nibiru psychosis. I'll call him Doug. He became so convinced that Nibiru was going to ravage, ravage the earth that he took his family's savings and spent it on cat food. That's right, cat food. He wanted his 17 cats to survive the Nibiru apocalypse. He spent $4,500 on cat food. Then, after he started getting substantial amounts of donations from fellow Nibiru believers, he took that money and abandoned his wife, his children, and his cats. Sad, very sad. I wish I could have helped him more. Following the incident, Dr. Wallace petitioned the Centers for Disease Control to recognize Nibiru addiction as a potentially pandemic disease. Asked whether she still treats Nibiru patients, she made a startling confession. I had to stop seeing them. It was getting too much for me to handle. I started thinking about Nibiru too much myself. I was having visions. I caught myself just in time. While Dr. Wallace makes valid arguments, her conclusions are questionable. She fails to account for scientific evidence that proves Nibiru's reality. Photographs taken from the Hubble and South Pole telescopes, testimony from authenticated whistleblowers, and notable scientists that have mysteriously disappeared. One thing is certain, the debate over Nibiru's existence has persisted for over 30 years and shows no signs of ending anytime soon. End of story. So we ran this story because we're often accused of publishing only pieces supporting Nibiru's existence. That is simply not true. We have always prided ourselves on presenting fair and balanced coverage when it comes to Nibiru. We are not in the business of convincing people whether Nibiru is real or fake. I write these stories based on information provided by experts in their fields of study and let the readers draw their own conclusions. That's about all I have for today. As a final note, we're all in this together. So to you other YouTubers out there that are out there fighting with one another over whose information is more accurate and accusing one another of some really nasty shit, just cut it out and present the Nibiru information. Bickering like a bunch of high school freshmen doesn't suit you. Until next time, this is Mike from someonesbones.com signing out.